Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Santa's Workshop. As you saw in the last video, we got some seats in the El Camino, or excuse me, El Caballero, since it's a mix of the, well, y'all know what I mean. But today, we finally got all the brake parts in for the Corvette. So we're going to get to on that, get some brakes on this thing. Once I have uh, got it back rolling, we're going to get the engine and transmission pulled so I can get it outside and get it washed. We've got a very short window of time with decent weather. I think in about half a week, we supposedly have a snowstorm coming in here in Oklahoma. Yay! Yeah, not really. <laughs> but we are going to get on this thing. And please, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. I promise this summer things are going to start getting done. We're going to be able to really get some part things moved out. One of the first things that's going to be going out of the shop will be this Corvette. Then, after we get that Corvette out, we're going to get the rear suspension fixed in that Mustang. My grandson is chomping at the bit to have that car, so we're going to get that done. And we're going to get some headway done on the El Caballero. We're getting the motor worked on now, and as soon as I get the money, I'll be getting the transmission for it. So, stick with us. We're going to have fun. Alrighty, we're going to try this voiceover thing here. Um, this master cylinder came with the car. It was brand new, still wrapped in plastic. I have no idea how long he had had it, but that plunger felt like it was trying to hang on me. And I was very concerned with that, so I tried to prime it or get it to move in and get it lubr lubricated up before I started actually priming the master cylinder. So that's why it looks like just a looks like i'm not quite doing it by book <laughs> but it got to working and i saw no leaks all righty i scuffed down the front of this thing shot a little paint on it get rid of some of the rest that master cylinder had been leaking as well and the bottom side of that thing which is covered in nasty and rust so we're going to let that dry, then I'm going to get the master cylinder on, but I'm not going to hook up the brake lines just yet. I want to go ahead and get it up in the air, get all the calipers on. I uh, blew out the brake lines, made sure they were clear. It was coming out of all four corners. Everything looks good. All the brake lines that I've seen so far, I'm pleased with. I don't see no excessive rust. There's, of course, you know, a little surface rust. I got new lines for the front lines for the back supposed to be in Monday so if anything um, Monday afternoon we should have breaks all right now before y'all say anything I know that the whole booster is not painted I uh, just wanted to get some paint where the master cylinder is going to go so uh, it doesn't rust out or doesn't rust out anymore and once I get the engine out and I can get inside get everything clean then I can just kind of wrap something around the master cylinder spray this and it'll look much better but uh, yeah while I was waiting for the paint to dry I was talking to old uh, Brandon Wyckoff he uh, he's the gentleman that come up from Georgia and hung out with us for a day or so and uh, we all got together over at Randy's us and the, the whole Oklahoma crew and uh, he started his own YouTube channel it's called wrenching with grandpa I will put a link down below y'all need to go check him out he has got a neat little project I will don't don't hurt me Brandon if I get this wrong I believe it's a 66 um, Barracuda nice little car little barn fine he's been friends with the guy who's owned it for years and he finally convinced him to let him uh, kind of fix it up for him so it is a it is a humdinger of a little car just slick as can be but it's got the you know the things yep air compressor always comes on when you least want it to but Little car's got, you know, the same typical 
problems we have here with this one. It's been sitting for quite some time and it just needs quite a bit of TLC. And he is already doing quite a few things with it. He is cleaning that interior up, making it come back to life. Uh, and I tell you, that fella, he, he, he's got some uh, good knowledge with the cars. Y'all check him out. But Rich and my grandpa. down in there there we go we're tight now then let's get this thing in the air and get some calipers on Do -do -do. All right, we got the, uh, took the rotors in to have them turned. They put them on the machine and all they needed was surfaced. They didn't need to be turned at all. So, we got those done. I'm gonna grab me a lug nut and put on there. And keep that thing from falling off. I just found what I did with them all. Now there are a few of y'all who uh, made comments about the rear, the the uh, rotor in the rear being looking a little, uh, little thin on the inside. Yes, that one has been turned before but it cleaned up really nice and since it's on the rear i'm not going to sweat it too much i'm going to go ahead and put it on if it gives us any problems on our test drives and taking it down the road i will pull it off and put new ones on Now the end.
hoping this side's a little easier now that I know what I'm doing. gentlemen got the caliper on got the brake line on I got to get a clip for up here I remember one of these was missing one so I bet you it was a side um, ball joints look really good sway bar bushings they they're not ate up they look a little loose but they're not ate up I might see if I can tighten those up right there looks good the actual A-frame bushings, they're a little dry, but they are in good condition. So I don't see no problems there. Rack and pinion, there is nothing loose on it. I think we're going to get the rest of these brakes on, get it outside. Or actually, I'm going to try and get the engine and tranny pulled before I push it out so I can wash this thing. And uh, we'll be on our way. I know a bunch of y'all have been seeing me use my little uh, flashlight that I wear on my head. I want to take this minute and show y'all a little bit about this thing. This is called the Strip Light Pro. It's by a company called Odelphi. Of course, you'll be able to see the link down in my description below, and I'll have it tagged up here. This has got to be the neatest thing I have ever seen. Now then, I'm going to try and do this without blinding you, but you got to... Okay. You got the one switch, turn it on. You can dim it. Hang on here. Okay, there's bright. Dim have a spotlight mode so if you want to get real close you can see there and it's got a dim on that now then if you get feel like you're in danger or you're wearing this to jog walk at night whatever you hold it and it goes into a flash mode but this is what I think is really really cool about it mechanics you're going to be able to identify with this now then, okay, we have it on the regular mode. This little button right here, you can see. You can turn it on and off just with the wave of the hand. There it goes. And it's not so sensitive that if you're just moving out here it doesn't turn it on you got to get close to it which i think is a great feature i've noticed underneath the car a few times you know when i've had that on um it's turned on and off but if it goes off you just got to go like that boom right back on now then what is so cool about this is you can turn that off and it just stays on and you turn it off and it fits extremely comfortably. And now the band is big enough that you can put it on a helmet, face shield, anything that you want to do. So say you're welding and you're in a darker spot, even though you've got the uh, automatic lens, you can put that on, turn it on, and you can see what you're doing then as soon as you start welding, boom, you know, your lens goes dark. But, I mean, this would actually help with that. But, Odelphi, you've got one heck of a product here. I love it. Thank you for sending me some so I could do a video about it. People, you need to get you one. Links below in the description and up here. Thank you all so much. Let's get to it.
righty, I'll take everybody for a first, first look under here with me. I mean, that does not look that bad. Fuel tank looks good. Drain lines broke off up there. I see absolutely no leaking. No rust. I know frame rail is rusty, but it's all surface rust. I mean, I see nothing flaking or going bad. Those wet spots is from my spray on that deal. Now this oil on the rear end is what has me concerned, but you know what I think? I think that's just the daggum drain plug leaking because, I mean, you look at that yoke and you look over here, let me get my light in there, at this yoke, there's no oil coming from those. Now, I have heard that this can crack, so what we're going to do is we're going to take it outside, we're going to jack it up, put it on jack stands, and I am going to get out there in the middle of winter and pressure wash the fooey out of this thing so we can... Uh, we can... Uh, Get it looking good. Okay, well, we're playing the waiting game again. Uh, brake line's supposed to have been in this morning. Now they're saying this afternoon. We're going to find out. So, in the meantime, we're going to yank the pan off of this 350 for the El Caballero and see what we have. Now then, Two bolt main or four bolt main? That is the question. Let's see what we got. And it's a two bolt. Doggone it. I was really hoping for a four. Oh well. It is what it is. I tell you, everything in there looks pretty darn good. my light and we'll make an inspection right real quick. I can still see the uh, the home marks inside these cylinders even where the skirt wears. Yeah, there's some skirt wear mark but that's to be expected. I mean, everything, everything looks really, really nice. I mean, look at that. That's a heck of a little old pickup. Somebody built this thing to be a little ripper.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, the saga continues. I uh, went to tighten up the bolts on the caliper, and this one here just sat and spun. It is definitely stripped out on the end of this bolt. The threads look okay here in the mounting tab. I know they're definitely okay on this side, so I'm going to have to find me one caliper bolt and see if it's going to work. Because I am not going to send this thing out with a strip bolt on a brake. That ain't going to happen. So, we're going to have to see what we can do with this. So, I was wanting to get the brakes done in this episode, but not going to happen. And also got to find me some little uh, tabs for these right here. So those will hold up. I need three of those. All three of those have broke. So, there we are. And the bad news just keeps pouring in. The motor out of the blue Elko is going to have to be completely rebuilt. Now, that being said, the crank does not look bad. I'm bringing you over here, turn you sideways to let you look. The journals are not horrible, but it is going to have to be polished out and remocked so we know what size bearings to get. Cylinders look really good. I mean, no, no piston ring uh, lip on it. We got that one there. We just tried honing it out. Looked really good. But if we look down here, see if we can get you in there. Get it. Come on. Focus. Focus. Cam bearings are eight up. Oops. Of course. And here is one of the main bearings. That is chewed two pieces. We did discover that a cam lobe had gone down. And we're thinking that because of said cam lobe, metal got throughout the engine and just... It would not have been long for this world. So... I can do one of two things. I can go and get a crank kit, which comes with a refurbished crank, cam bearings, or not cam bearings, uh, main bearings and piston bearings set for the size of that crank. Or I can take that crank to a machine shop and have it polished out and mocked and then get the appropriate uh, bearings that way. Either way, they're going to cost me about the same. Um, that crank is not that bad. So I may get take it and have it checked to see. But uh, that's where we're at on this one. Heads look good. Um, as I showed you in the last video, that one passage right there. But you can see... There is no, no mess up on the block. The heads were not uh, torqued down correctly. Half the box, bolts were loose. The other half were so tight you couldn't hardly break them loose. But what was interesting was every one had silicone around them. <coughs> now, I, I don't know everything about motors, but that just mm, that, some, something about that just didn't sound right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you saw the Strip Lot Pro. What I didn't tell you is they sent me two to use as I wanted to see fit. Well, I am going to do a drawing for the second one. So, what I want you all to do, you've got to pay attention now because I only choose the ones that follow through. 
on this video for the next week. As soon as this video comes out, one week to the day, I'll, keep, I'll start taking the names of everybody who sends me a comment that says, Odelphi, I want one. Odelphi, O-D-E-L-F-I. Right there, Odelphi. I want one. And I will take all those names and we'll put them in a random selector and we'll choose one and I will ship it to you. I don't care if it's over on the other side of the world. I will send it to you. But this little thing right here is the neatest thing that I have ever used. Handiest. I've used it several times. I mean, as soon as I got them, I opened the box, used it within 30 minutes. That's just saying. <laughs> I was so excited to get it. But remember, Odelphi, I want one. We'll get one to you. Well, we're going to end this video off right here. Uh, Got to go to shopping, find a certain boat for a C3 Corvette rear caliper. Got to find a crank. Got to find bearings, piston rings. So, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to spend some money. <sighs> if anybody has any, let me know. <laughs> but anyways... We're going to end the video off here. Don't forget Odelphi. I want one. This is the neatest thing that I have used. All the lighting you've seen me working on the car has been coming from this and this alone. This is... I had to get under the dash of the uh, El Caballero the other day to find the uh, hot wire hookup for the seats. Fumbling with the flashlight, kept sliding out of the way. This come in the mail, I grabbed it, put it on. I mean, just lit it up like daylight under there. You would not believe it. But for the price, these things are very, very well worth it. And they're rechargeable. You just plug it in right there. USB charging port. Rechargeable. Don't have to buy batteries for it. These are worth its weight in gold. I, I love it. But remember, Odelphi, I want one. Send me those comments a week to the day after this video comes out. I will go through the comments. I will gather up everybody who commented that exact phrase, put them all their names in a hat, and we'll draw one and we will send it to you. I'll contact you. You can send me your shipping address and we'll get it to you. But please, please, like and subscribe. A lot of you who are watching are not subscribed. Please subscribe. I mean, it costs you nothing, but it helps me tremendously. But thank you all for being here. We will see you next time on Santa's Workshop.